round number. Um, thanks to everybody for joining, and best of luck to everybody participating. In five, four, three, two, one, here we go. Good luck. I'm going to need all the luck in the world. Here we go. I have auto switch on, so that's good. Okay, we'll stick with my tournament openings, which means queen pawn, which means queen pawn, which means try to get a Berlin, try to get, oh, I got four blacks. Okay, that's exciting. Uh, I guess that is a random color distribution. We'll try to get a Verisov here. I'm working on improving my Verisov, so um, I think I usually play bishop c5 against the king's gambit. Try to get a Berlin, a Berlin. Oh, okay, no Verisov today. I'm curious where this goes. Um, oh, it's the Winmore. Okay, are we going to get... Um, hmm, a Pierce. What do I play again? Oh, it's not a Pierce because this isn't an E4 opening. Okay, uh, we're going to play a Catalan-ish sort of thing here. Two knights, scotch game. Um, four knights opening with bishop b4. Okay, and this transposes into Max Lang. Um, Max Lang, right? Do I want to go there? Do I want to do bishop e7? I have options here. Um, hmm. I mean, I've typically played d5 here, but I've also gotten just toasted badly in the Ponziani. And this is very similar to a Ponziani, and I want to see if there's other things I can play here. Um, if I could delay uh, d5. No, I can't delay it profitably. The only thing that I could do to attempt to profit would be knight a5, except that just loses the center pawn. Um, so d5 it is to try to win this. Oh! Holy moly! I've never seen this one before. Um, this gives up the d4 square. What is this opening? Okay. Right, so we take back here. And here, book is d5. All right. Um, mm -hmm. How does book go here? Do I take on c3 or do I retreat back to a5? It's got to be taking here. All right, so this mounts pressure on d4. Wait. This is a French where black doesn't get to play c5. Um, that's pretty nice for me. Okay, so here, do I play knight a5 or knight b6? Knight b6 provokes bishop b5 and I lose my pawn. Bishop d6 drops the pawn outright. Bishop g4 is a pin. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to hold the e-pawn. These openings are tricky. I think bishop e7 is the way to go, and if rook e1, then bishop to g4, and I think I'm set. I think this is the correct way to navigate this maze of landmines. Alright, so... Do I just throw knight f3 out here immediately, or do I play e4? Or bishop g5 looks okay, too. That provokes h6. Hmm. I've got stuff to learn about this particular opening. Um. Interesting. Somebody doesn't have a twitch, I guess we're saying. Huh, that's interesting. Um. Yeah, knight f3 is a good developing move. Alright, here knight e4 is book. Okay, I'm very confused by b takes. Um, so white's plan is d4. 
Wait, do I just chop the... No, I don't. I have to castle at some point. The sooner the better, because then I can bring, bring my rook to the open file. Like this. Um, and my plan here is bishop g4, and I think I'm okay there. Here, I think book is bishop d7. Um... I think black's fine there. Okay, I think this is just excellent for white. Um, so now what? I've saved my e-pawn, although he's going to play h3 next and force me to trade or run away. In either event, my e-pawn is not very well protected. Um, queen d6... And if he forces me to run away, I don't know. It's complicated. Um, how does this go? I mean, I could castle and drop the pawn. Now, if I castle, I have Tempe to hold this position together. But what I really want to do is play queen d6. And if I can get away with queen d6, then I'm. I want a pawn storm the king side. That's. I'm wanting a lot of things here. That doesn't seem realistic. But how great would it be if I could get away with it? Oh, jeez. We're going to reach for the stars, I suppose, and we are going to get burned. Here we go, queen d6. Alright, so my big idea is that I'm attacking e4, and I don't so much care about e5, although I could take on d4 and then take on e4. Um, I could also play d5 directly. Hmm. So if I take e4, they take e5. And I can't play d5 without exchanging pawns. So I have to take d4 first, but then e5 can be played. But then I could play d5, they take f6, I take c4, they take g7. It's not so good. Okay, so I take on d4, they play e5, I play rook e8, they play knight g5. I take here and then take the knight, maybe? I think I'm okay if I take this. Oh, okay. C3. Okay, can I not play d5 and then knight f6 here? This feels like a d5 and knight f6 e sort of position. Um, I could also just play queen h4. Queen h4 looks crushing. I'm very confused. Well, we're going to play it and have our 2300 rated opponent teach us a thing or two about that offbeat opening. Um, if I play this, they play d5, which might be okay. Hmm. I'm taking the pawn. We'll see where it goes. Yeah, g3 I assume, but then I just take on g3. I'm not seeing something there. So I saw this, but my plan was queen e6. And my plan doesn't go much farther than that. But I think this is the more fun way to play it. Okay. So, question. Are they really going to... Wait, first of all, can I play queen h5 here? No, this drops d4. Um, second, do they really want to be playing h6? Hmm. I guess their plan is to play the knight out and then take my bishop, so unless I take the knight straight away, enabling them to play c5, um, this kind of works out for black. But if I drop back here, at least I'm not undermining my own center. So I think book here is pawn takes. Pretty sure. 
pretty sure. Okay, and then... So now we've transposed into Pierce proper, except again, I haven't played E4, so I'm kind of out of my element here. Um, like, the one thing I see is that I can bring my bishop out and then my queen to somehow support it and try to mate on the king's side, which seems much too ambitious for this position, where all my pieces want to point to the queen's side. Um, but if I'm to make a center stake, like, Playing e4 and e5 does not create a favorable pawn structure. So, um, where does my bishop really belong? Not on f4 because knight h5 hits it. Not on g5 because like it doesn't do anything there. I want to put it on b2. That might provoke him to play d5, but then if he plays d5, I could go to a3 instead. All right, so we take the center. I'm up pawn. Um, okay. I guess I have to do this. Uh, if I retreat, pawn here, take, 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 whatever. I don't have a checkmate, so yeah, we're going to exchange here. All right, and we're going to get my king to safety. Wait, do I play bishop c5? What is book here, here again? Book here... I think it's bishop e7. I don't remember. Bishop c5 looks tempting, but I think I've gotten smacked here before. But I don't remember why. So we're playing it. And we're going to get smacked again. I think it's f3 now that I think more about it. Um, so what's my problem in this position? Knight g5 is scary, but I think this counters that. Oh, but then he's got knight c3. Okay. Um, I should probably castle and hope that my rook holds all this together. Right, I saw that. Um. Huh. <laughs> that makes an easy target for his other knight, so I guess they're going here instead. Um, uh, well, no, I have to protect h4 against this queen check, I think. I want to play bishop g4. Hang on. Um, yeah, I have to develop, and this seems like the best way to develop. Okay, so I thought I had things we're holding together here somehow. Um, I think I thought wrong. So, knight d4, well, it's my only shot here, but I think it's losing material. I, yeah, if I move my knight, I lose my queen with tempo. Um, and I don't have a way out of this pin with tempo. So, knight d4 is the only try, but I think it also loses pretty handle, or e quickly. Um, but I don't see what else to try here, so we're going to try it. Um, okay, let's protect the knight. Run back. Here, I was saying I probably just... Why didn't I take on g1 last turn? Oops, well, okay. I didn't realize that retracting moves would switch boards. My mistake. Um... Okay, so this holds my center together. Yeah, if I'd just taken on g1, this would have been a better position. Okay, well, I blew it. Yeah, the queen on f3 protects the rook on h1. I looked at that position for on some number of seconds, and I didn't see that. I really did try. 
I did not try hard enough. Um, okay, so my center is getting undermined. This is not good. Um, so what do I do to try to extract myself th from this mess? Bishop c5 doesn't really do anything, because he either attacks the bishop or just plays king h1. So we're going to play this to try to hold it together. Um, okay, I was going to drop back and protect my knight and take this diagonal. Okay, let's get my rook out of the corner. <laughs> Okay, so I'm not completely crazy that this opening was not entirely sound, uh, to put it mildly. Yeah, together we might make something of a decent player. Okay, so I was right to be completely thrown by that, but I just didn't react properly. Um, Alright, so I think I've played this before even in blitz, but I don't think it's ended well. Um, okay, so do I have to play b5? This bishop is super annoying, but just because it's annoying doesn't mean, well, I don't know. I mean, what do I do here? My big idea was to pawn storm the king's side, and that's completely fallen apart. Um, I guess we transfer this way, get out of the pin. Maybe that's decent development and castle. Okay. My opponent's intending e5 or d5 or some kind of five. Ah, where do I put my pieces? Well, hmm. Let's connect the rooks. Okay, and then... I don't know. Queen d6 seems to control a lot of squares. Alright, there's d4. And so... I am down on space. I'm going to exchange queens. Um, try to create some kind of imbalance here. Oh, that just drops a bishop. Um, I meant try to create an imbalance without giving away buckets of material. Um, that's not easy. Oh, that is not easy. Jeez. I Knights move backwards, don't they? Why didn't somebody warn me that knights move backwards? Alright, so fine. This might work. I'm out of ideas, so we're playing this. Okay, and then we run away. Um, so... Okay, we'll just slowly move up the... Oh, here we go, this way. Up the board on the king's side. That's more fun. Um, oh man, I want my knight on the king's side. Because there's like no action on the queen's side other than this weak pawn on a3. Which is pretty easily defended. Um, hmm. Okay. I'm confused. Again. If I try to play f5, f4, they play queen d2. But then my knight could actually go to c4 with a purpose, but then he is playing bishop f4. Um, maybe I just want that bishop. But if I play knight a4, he's got knight e5, but then I play f6. So this is actually the best way to develop my pieces. What a mess. Um, okay, over here... I could plant my knight on b6, except that doesn't really change anything. Um. Hmm. This is going to be fun. 
Rook F to B1. Who plays that kind of move? I do. All right, so I can't play knight E1, so we're playing this instead. But now he plays C5. Um, over here, do I play H5? No. It's not quite that bad. We're not that desperate just yet. We're getting there, but not just yet. All right, we'll just develop. You know, pretend everything's okay. Um, right, so I think in response to this, I have to try to liquidate on d4. If my memory serves me right, and maybe it doesn't. Okay, so the subtle point of my maneuvering is that I'm obviously intending some aggression on the queen's side. I'm subtly, obviously, uh, intending this. So, let's start it. Okay, queen e2. Um, well, my knight on the rim is pretty dim, so let's move it. I actually wield some influence on c4. Okay, so... He didn't play c5. I don't understand. Why is chess so difficult? Um... Okay, I guess I stop c5 permanently if I play b4, so let's build up to doing that. There we go, b4. And then as long as I don't lose my b4 pawn, c5 isn't happening. Okay, this is complicated because I could just take a 3 and then run away. And he takes a7. Hmm. My pieces are superior here, though, so... I should attempt for something um, a little more inspired somehow. Wait. Oh, my head hurts. <laughs> How do I evaluate this? My knight dominates his bishop, is how we evaluate this. So we should take a f3. Just to make that advantage as well pronounced as possible. Alright, so here I want to... If I could force him to do pawn takes on e5, um, then my position would be excellent. But I can't force that. Like, he's always got knight takes and rook takes here. Um, so, do I have to play b5? Wait, do I play e3? No, then he plays d5 and I have a bad center. Um, this is confusing. So, I want to play b5 for lack of a better idea. Anything else I do just helps him develop. So this is best. Alright, now if I take a3... Well, it's still a mess. Um, here, let's develop this piece. Right, and then if I remember right, I have to trade how do I have to trade this here again? Um, do I dare play that ultra sharp thing that didn't work out in my other blitz game? I think I do. Oh right, because we resolved after that blitz game I should play rook b8. So rook b8's eventually coming there. Stay tuned. Um, okay, we got to develop. Okay, we win material. Oh. Oh, well, that's generous. Do I just take e3? No, not exactly. Um, wow. I'm surprised this works so well. 
Is this the only way to preserve an advantage? It doesn't even do that, because he has bishop c1. What the heck? <laughs> oh, chess is not fair. I was playing so well. Okay, we have to do this to stop bishop f4, but... Oh, come on. <laughs> so not fair. All right, so this maybe wins a pawn. I don't even know. Um, right, so my big idea is to try to get bishop c6 here. Uh, my knight's under attack, so you develop this way. Yeah. Oh, where did I, m I miscalculate? It should have taken with a knight somewhere. And one of these six games, I should have done knight takes something, apparently. Um, I'll have to think that through and figure out which it was. <laughs> what a game. But somehow with six participants, this 2020 simul thing isn't the most terrible thing ever. Um, so, I was expecting it to go uh, kind of in flames like my 5-5 five five simuls have gone, which are pretty exciting but short-lived. Um, wait, so he's renewing the threat of bishop f4, but I could do queen takes a3, just to spite him. And we'll have to see what he figured out here. Or I mean, I could sit there calculating, but it's more fun to see what he came up with. Um, okay. I control d5, don't I? What am I missing here? I guess I'm going to run away this way, though. Which might not have been so obvious. So... This has been a test of my memory. Wait. Oh boy. Oh boy. YOLO? Maybe? I don't know. This looks dangerous. I should probably just play d4 here. And my position's okay. Despite looking like trash, my position's fine. I think. Um. Okay, we need to activate... We need to hit this a6 pawn. Because it's the obvious target here. Oh, here's a way to hit it. Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, if you say so, I guess the position's okay. Uh, I want to take on c3, but that feels really greedy. It feels like I'm playing not very smart chess if I just take pawns and take pawns and... Just let my center deteriorate. So we're going to protect d5. Oh! Balls. <laughs> I forgot about the f-pawn. I was going to play knight h6 as soon as he played knight g5, and I kind of lost track. Um, That's not good. YOLO maybe-ish? I don't know. This is falling apart. It's beautiful. Um, okay. Well, we're just going to put the knight on a good square. Knight b6. Okay, so he's attempting to take the d5 square. That makes sense. Although, don't I have a5 here? a5, knight c4. Okay. Uh, can I prevent knight c4 somehow? Not really. The moves I could do to prevent that move from happening are pretty disgusting. Okay. Can I hit this d6 pawn before he has... No, knight c4 covers d6. Alright. I can't play knight... No, oh, knight d5. Knight d5, bishop d5. Uh, knight d5, queen d5, bishop e6. 
Uh, it's a sad position, but... Wait, my bishop's exposed on this long diagonal. Um, do I take my chances here? I don't think so. I think I have to do knight a5 to stop knight c4. My knight is kind of out of play here. And this does help activate my rook. And I can't exactly give up the diagonal. Alright, so... I've defended my d-pawn. If we take rook takes, rook takes, rook takes... Wait, okay, c3 is dropping without a fight. So now I should just take it and then take d4 next. Um... Only because if I liquidate on e3 at the moment, he does rook takes e3 and I just can't develop at all. So I have to take my chances with this. But I think I'm safe. Okay, so that's a rook move. Um, it's definitely a rook move. There's a knight move to follow it. Okay, um... feel like a bully for playing this, but we're going to play queen c3 here. Okay, so this temporarily stops his attack on f7 for a single tempo. Um, who am I kidding? My position's falling apart. <laughs> okay. Um, mm, mm, this is not good. Okay, um... Wait, if I play bishop d6... Yeah, I might survive that. Alright. Um... We're just gonna trade. Uh, I think I undermine the rook. That looks good. Oh, that's a good developing move. Very nice. This is sharp. This is very sharp. So... Uh, YOLO? Here we go. Uh, okay, we'll take one of these. Alright, so... I think I need to develop. Oh, he's going to hit my f-pawn. Well, that's not going to be pleasant. Um, okay. I feel like I should have something here that doesn't give up my f-pawn. This is scary, because he can triple on my f-pawn, and my queen's kind of out of play at the moment. I want to play this, just so I can run back faster. This might not be necessary. Yeah, well played, Cormac. Sorry about that tactic at the end there. I'm probably going to be the victim of a tactic in this game. Just, there's an overwhelming number of things to calculate in this position. Um, okay. Um, mm -hmm. we need the knight. The knight's stopping me. Okay, well this, now his king is in the middle of everything. So now this might actually work. Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. Okay. So, material is I'm up a pawn. Um, hmm. That's really complicated. Holy moly, that's complicated. What do I do?
So I'm looking at knight d6, trying to find a way to make it work. I think it barely does work. It's very close. If I end up going down in flames, this will be the game of the simul. <laughs> it's a beautiful game. Oh, his queen defends at e2. There's all kinds of sneaky traps here. Um, wait, can I just take e3? Take e3, take e3, take e3, take e3, take e3. I could. Should I? No. I should just play this. Okay, so I think I've survived that opening, maybe. Now if I remember right, I could play the knight to e4. Um, <laughs> knight f4, queen f3. Wait, now this, my knight's temporarily safe here. Yeah, so maybe I've remembered this okay. Sorry to be pulling crazy opening theory nonsense in a simul. Um, I've just played a lot of those variations and sub-variations, so I am trying to rely on my memory there. Uh, I think this is... oh, maybe this loses, maybe this loses an exchange. Um... Hmm. Maybe I have to do knight c to e4 here. No. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter which knight. Because if there's a tactic, it works with either knight here. Or does it? Uh, I think knight c to e4 can't be bad. I think. Alright, so he's protecting the center, which at some level does make sense. Where the idea concept kind of falls apart is that this passed pawn runs quickly. Okay, what? What's knight a3? That's an interesting move. That's a very interesting move. I have to stop knight b5, so we do this. I have to stop knight takes queen, so we do that. Um, okay, that's a fun... that's a good way to play this. Um, <laughs> I have to trade off into an endgame. Right, so where this falls apart is that pawns run quickly. And I'm able to create a passed pawn. Now here I have to play bishop c6. Um, or was it rook b8? Was this the position where rook b8 was necessary? I don't remember. Okay, so we get an endgame. All right, and so this uses the d4 square that was just vacated. We take the queen. And somehow I was imagining my knight was both on e4, um, so it was hanging, and that bishop a2 were possible winning the knight. But I miscalculated that, so I think I was good here. Oh, yeah, what a crazy game for sure. All right. Um... Okay, so the rook runs back, and here I think we just liquidate everything. Okay. And I just keep trading if this doesn't get me mated, and I don't think it does. Because we have that pawn on b7, and if he attempts anything greedy, um... I can just try to checkmate him instead. Okay, so before I get in all kinds of trouble, we're going to trade bishops there. Oh, is my knight not escaping this? I thought I was okay. I was pretty sure I was okay. 
All right, so castles. Now do I finally get the chance to play H6? I don't think I do. I think I have to just continue development. Or rather, start development. So I think we start by playing castle. Okay, I think this pawn runs a little bit too quickly there. Um, all right. Here, let's take care of that. Oh, he's got the G2 square under lock and key. So... YOLO, I guess? All right. All right, we'll take one of these. Okay, can I play b6, rook takes b7? Yeah, I can. b6, rook takes knight, b7, um, rook d8, rook a8. Oh, but then rook d1 and rook... Okay, that's shenanigans. That's ridiculous. That's funny. Um, but it doesn't work. Okay. Well, that was close. Um, almost fell for it. Gotta develop these pieces, you know. All right, we'll take one of these. Oh, he hits my queen, so I have to retreat. We're gonna keep that pressure on g2. Yeah, thanks for a game, Cormac. Good game. Oh, my big idea was to try to play c4, but I can't do it anymore. Um, I guess my next big idea is to try to get this rook and pawn endgame. Okay, we'll see how my opponent plays this. Oops. Alright, there, I got to move my pawn. It was in the way of my queen. Um, do I get to undermine d5 here? I'm pretty sure I do. My opponent offers a draw. It's mighty generous. I think I see something better than a draw, but I'm not totally sure. Okay, so I think this is a queen. Uh, no, never mind. We'll just finish that game. Good game. <laughs> uh, it's tempting to push all the pawns. Uh, discretion is the better part of Valor. Oh, is this doing an auto-switch now? Do I get my next game? Uh, it's trying to auto-switch, but not finding a game to auto-switch to. We'll switch to this one. Or I think I have bishop b7. I think I'm okay. Um, oh, it's my move here. Alright, my opponent did spot that I was attacking their bishop. Well spotted. Um, so, how do I try to win this? I want this bishop. Rook a4, bishop b5, rook b4. Oh, wow. Holy moly. That's amazing that I have this tactic and it's anywhere remotely close to applying pressure. This should probably take on e2, but I think I'm still good there. Um, so, I intended castle here. And not the castle you're thinking of. Unless you're thinking of this one. Alright, so... Alright, so because they have bishop e2, I think I have c4. Can I trap the bishop? Or do I have to go for c4 here? c4, rook c8, b6, rook takes knight, b7. Works. 
So it gains the vital tempo I need. And then I can transfer my knight away and then use my knight to defend the c-pawn. And then if they try to win the knight, then my b-pawn races through and promotes. Um, I think. Hopefully I did that right. Alright, so if I take the knight, I get... Oh! 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 oh. Well played. Okay. Um, well, that's surprising. I should probably take the knight anyway, because if I run, they've got knight c7, rook takes rook, and I'm maybe surviving that? Huh. Rook e8, knight c7, rook takes rook, rook takes rook. Rook moves somewhere. It's super sketchy, but I'm not seeing it losing. Um, <laughs> Whereas if I take the knight, I am getting in a world of hurt, I think. Like, even after I move the king away? I'm not so sure. Take, move the king, they take there. I want to see where this goes. Curiosity killed the cat. Um, Alright, so I think I race this pawn up as quickly as possible. Except there's the back rank mate threat. Just not so nice. Um, geez. End games are hard, guys. Okay, we're gonna stop the back rank mate threat. And sidestep. I think this is surviving ish. Okay. I want my center to hold together, I can't be taking things. Although I could do bishop b5 to grab material. Um, oops, I missed rook e7. Okay, so I should develop here. Wait, what? B6, right? This is what I calculated earlier. Hopefully it still holds here. Or I've just had some massive delusion of sorts, I guess. Now, does my bishop not belong in this long diagonal? What's going on in this game? How am I not losing this? How am I surviving this? Okay, so... Hmm. I need to develop? Um... Knight d5 is kind of a monster knight. But it does allow rook e6. Oh, hang on. All right, this is not good. This is pretty not good. <laughs> this is pretty not okay. <laughs> Oops. Um, that's what happens when you start grabbing material. Everything falls apart. All right, so I'll try to hold that together. Have I missed some tactic here? Because if I have, it's going to be glorious. Okay. 
I'm still not seeing if I've missed a tactic here. Because it really looks like I can promote that pawn. I mean, that, that very much looks promoted to me. Oh, that's a check. Alright, so we'll stop the check. And we've got an endgame. Holy moly, I've got an endgame. Um... All right, do I just play rook d8 out of excitement? Or do I try to calculate stuff? <sighs> okay, well, I mean, rook d8 can't spoil things, so let's start with rook d8. Um... I am so confused why he did that. Um, cause I have so many counter threats here, don't I? I should have something. activate our last piece. Okay, this endgame's got to be better for black. So we need to race these kingside pawns, and because he can't play rook h1, I should just play h5 directly. If rook h1 were possible, then I have to be slower about this. But, as it is, I can gain a tempo there. Here I can just play rook d7, unless I've really missed something. Um, so my big plan here should just be erase everything up the board. And my bishop dominates the knight, because bishops are better than knights in open positions with pawns on both flanks. So that's my big idea. As long as I watch out for tactics, I should be okay here if not much better. Right, so I've been trying to calculate this. This is complicated. I do bishop f7? That gives him a tempo. Wait, I should be doing bishop c6 or pawn takes pawn here. I think pawn takes pawn helps him too much, so we're going to try this. Right, so I dropped g7, but... No, I didn't. I, apparently I did. I thought I had that covered. Okay, we have to develop this way. And see if our piece activity counts for anything. So we got two games left.
I wonder if I timed out on any of the games. No. Four wins, two ongoing. So I've not timed out on any game. Alright, so... Right, that's the testing move here. Um... I'm watching that other game just in case it moves or has moved. I want to see the position as quickly as possible there. Um, I'm still optimistic about my chances here. All right, there it is. Um, so here goes my king. Pawn takes pawn. Okay, we'll see where this goes. Knight f five's the threat. Oh, queen takes. Oh, well played. Yeah, that'll hold it. That'll hold it for sure. Okay. Huh. So I'm just in a pawn down endgame. And possibly much worse than that. Um, okay, that stops me from invading immediately. Uh, I thought I had something there. Apparently not. So what's going on here? So I cover the e8 square. Um, and if I'm greedy, I play king b7 and try to win this. Or rather, if I'm greedy, I play king b7 and hold on to my material. Um, that doesn't quite work so well, does it? All right, so I have to play this. Even though that loses yet another pawn. And puts me down three pawns in this end game. But I don't think that's the only problem here. All right, so I have to not lose my queen. Okay, so can I not just take on a4 twice? No, I cannot. But, um... For sure, taking an a4 is the most contentious move there, or most testing move. Um, I need my king to cover the promotion square. Now we got to move the rook. Okay, so how do I activate this? And this gets his rook away from my... Uh, G4 square. Uh, 
All right, so the obvious threat is obvious, but we have to play it anyway. Right, and so with that played, um, I can transfer my rook to bigger and better things. I think this doesn't immediately lose. Oh, hang on. Well, yeah, it does immediately lose in the most hilarious possible way. All right, let's see it. I'm tired of defending this, so here we go. That's beautiful. I calculated everything other than that. I did see it, and I'm like, oh, I just moved my king somewhere. It's okay. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> well, that was exciting. All right, let's try to win this. Um, okay, so I can't hit the knight. So the only way to attack g3 is to um, use my pawns. So we're going to hit g3 with everything I got. Like if I move my bishop away try to trade it for the knight, he just promotes. So I have to use the pawns. I don't have a choice. This does allow his king to try to hold off my king and pawn, but if I distract his king in this direction, then my king can run the other direction. Um, okay. So I play bishop f7 here. Or do I play h3? h3 is just like most of the time a pawn move is not a good idea. Um, it feels wrong here too. If I play h3, I'm not really threatening to do anything. I need this tempo. I badly need this tempo. And the other idea is this, and that, and that. It's always more fun to have the bishop in these positions, at least where your bishop is not blockaded by your own pawns. I wonder, had no, had I started this all with g5 instead of h5, my king never would have made it off the back rank. So h5 leading this off was the right way to go. Um, so... Now do I not just go h3? If I don't play h3, it's like I'm never threatening to play it. But if I play bishop d3, he plays c5, I take, he plays d6. And I don't have a way to get back. So I have to push h3 here. Or bishop e4, um, which is probably the saner way to do this. It might not matter. But if it does matter, bishop e4 is almost certainly the right way to go about it. You 
you almost always want to prefer a piece move to a pawn move. Um, but here it might not matter. If his knight moves, I have bishop d3, and then I take this. So what I'm calculating is king g1, king g3, knight e2 check, and then king f3, and I don't know. It's kind of messy. Maybe he does knight e2. But then he doesn't have the same promotion threats, because then my bishop can always drop back to f5 to stop d7. How did I even get this position? Like, this is a really awesome position for black to have against a 2300, against such a respectable opponent. I recognize that not everybody uses all their time in the simul, and that... Uh, even though I'm giving a simul, it's easy for opponents to get distracted with so much time between moves. Um, but I played pretty well this game. Alright, so I have to take that. Yeah, I have to take it, so there's no decision here. And then I have to stop this pawn. But then once his knight moves, I have bishop c6 and h2, threatening h1. So if I play bishop c6, he has to play king g1. But a pawn playing... well, okay. I have the wrong squared rook pawn, or wrong colored rook pawn. So that's something to look out for. Um, so maybe I play c4 here. c4, knight c5. It's tricky. <sighs> End games. So tricky. He's intending something to play d7 next. Ship c6. Knight takes pawn, d6. Okay. Uh, we both promote. Yeah, that's not the right way to go. If I play c4, he's got knight c5, bishop c6, king g1. It's not so good either. I think this is the right way to go. I'm probably going to get punished here somehow, but this feels right. And if he plays d7, I just take it. So what I was most concerned about here was knight takes a6. But I think I still have this um, under control. If knight takes a6, I just push the c-pawn. So he has to stop that. Um... This keeps his knight locked up. I want to stop king g3. A 
You might not get to stop King G3 for nothing. But his king is much too slow here. My bishop can cover both of these squares simultaneously. Um, okay. So, what's my winning plan here? Yeah, my king chases down the knight, and if his king transfers to the queen side, this is still a threat. If king doesn't transfer to the queen side, then I get to play this. Uh, and then I trade my c-pawn for the knight, and then I proceed to win this endgame. His knight can't cover both c1 and d7 at the same time, so... I think I finally convert this. All right. Game set and match. Okay, so let's ask our silicon friend just how that went. Like, did I have missed some big chances here somewhere? Okay, c4 is apparently not the cleanest way to convert this. Um, bishop c6 directly is just fine. How so? Oh, wait, wait, no? Okay, I calculated this. I saw that. I win the knight. Wait. No, that's not convincing. Oh, wait, I win the knight with check. I'm still not convinced. I saw something like this might be possible, but jeez. Knight d3 apparently blows it. Apparently he's equal here somehow. If he plays d7... <laughs> no! No, wow. Okay. Oh god, we're... We're bad at chess. Uh, okay. Uh, it looked nice. No, I know this endgame. Oh my goodness. I know that one. I know that's a draw. Oh, I just didn't see knight e5 check. Or rather, I didn't see knight d3 after knight e5. No, that's just clearly drawn. <laughs> oh my god. That's so inaccurate. Okay, so that's why c4 was bad. Uh, it's because I have to play bishop c6 here. Oh. Well, okay. I'm going to say that if this were an over-the-board game, like game 60, I would have calculated this. I would have figured it out. I've done similar marvels over the board. This one's more challenging, but I somehow would have figured it out. But that said, I probably wouldn't get this against a 2300 over the board. They probably would have crushed me long before this point in the game. Uh, so we had one point here where white was better. Right, I saw knight b5. Um, I didn't see whether it was convincing or not, but... For sure, this terrified me. But I also assumed my opponent wouldn't play it. Um, so apparently, to stop that, or to render it moot, I have to play bishop d7 here? How does that improve my position? It keeps my king in the square of the d-pawn. It also allows my bishop to stop the pawn on a6. No, not really. How is this an improvement? I'm very confused. Like, after king g4... I was terrified at this, 
because I can't do a takes. And if I do bishop takes, he just promotes. Um, oh, with the bishop on d7, the difference here is that I can do a takes um, because I have this possibility. And then he takes on b5, but I'm still winning this. Barely. Um, but yeah, I needed my bishop on d7 to defend against this. Otherwise, I just drop d6 and he promotes right away. Uh, but he missed it. I would give myself credit for that being a nice endgame conversion, but I just didn't see most of what was going on in this endgame. And apparently my g5 response was not at all accurate. I had to play king f3. I was in time pressure. That's my excuse. King f3 is a very improbable move because it just allows knight to d4 check and then that knight to b5 threat is scary again. But this time black promotes before white um, promotes. Um, for example, king here and then knight b5 taking out the d-pawn. You say, okay, take my d-pawn. You say, okay, take my bishop. And like White's not winning this. Maybe if this g-pawn weren't here, white might have knight f5. Maybe that'd be okay. Um, but here, white's just too slow. Um, and knight e4 puts the knight as distant as possible from the g2 square. And since it's distant from, like, uh, black covers both the f2 and g3, um, I mean, yeah, white can bring their king over. Um, but this is decisive. Like, this knight and king have not coordinated well at all to cover the corner. So, it's not even close. So the point is that this big spooky scary thing, the knight d4 and knight b5 idea, that had terrified me a move ago, is no longer possible. And that I should have played king f3 to box their king out of the corner, and then I just promote with g5, h4, etc. Um, pawn g5, that is. So, my mistake. Um, what happened this opening? What happened here? Was this the... Oh, <laughs> this one. Um, yeah, queen f3. E takes f4s. I've got to think that, like, Taking on g1 can't be that bad here. Knight c6, d6, all this stuff. Okay, so yeah, taking on g1 is not that great. Um, taking on f4 makes sense, but this is like super provocative at this point. Surely I should take on g1, right? No, apparently not. Wait. d5 is something I strongly contemplated. Why didn't I just play d5 and knight f6? My knight, my bishop is beautiful on c5. There's no reason to trade it for this pathetic knight on g1. Um, I mean, we could look at it, but I'm just not convinced that it leads to any kind of advantage. Yeah, of course, Stockfish is like changing its mind repeatedly here. I think g3, and yeah, I could take on h2, but what's the point? Um, rook g2, uh, queen h1, queen h3, what's going on here? Queen h3 pins the g-pawn. Still, this just doesn't feel right, because black has no pieces developed. All of black's pieces are on the edges of the board. Um, even if somehow one of these queen moves ends up being good, no human's going to understand the position. But I'm not convinced it's that good, either. I mean, yeah, you've saved a tempo, because white never no longer gets a tempo by playing d4. 
but is it really worth it? Queen h3, and white just develops. I don't, well, I kind of get e5 to stop black from playing d6. Yeah, Stockfish keeps changing its evaluation here, but I don't think taking on g1 is necessarily a good move here. Um, I like my idea of just playing d5, although this does invite white playing d4. Oh, this is clever, and then if he checks... Oh, I was going to block with the queen. Blocking with the bishop, but then white can take on f4 with tempo somehow? Um, no, black is equalized. White's the one fighting to try to figure out how to develop his knight on b1. White has only a single piece developed. And, okay, white can develop, but he's going to lose a tempo with the queen at some point. So black is definitely equalized here. But no worse. White has not failed here. Interesting. Okay. Um, what happened that other game? Let's take a look. What was it? Uh, this one, was it? Oh, did I just... No, my opponent resigned. Oh. This left me wondering throughout the game, like, what happened to this game. Wait, uh, minus three. What? What's going on here? I'm very confused. I mean, yeah, I could play h5. I was definitely looking forward to playing this position. Um, even though it's, like, super risky for black, I, was, I wasn't sure if I was going to play bishop c5 or h5 or some other try to, like, defend my e-pawn sort of thing or move my knight away from d5 to hit this bishop. Um, I'm very confused, like, why my opponent conceded here. Oh, this is so... If the knight moves, I have knight to e f3 check. Okay, that's the subtle point. Um, what if this? Queen g3. Queen f5, queen f6. I have to move the queen somewhere, so let's assume I find that. Um, okay, and then we take on d5 to try to trade off some material. And... Like, f3's covered, but I'm threatening to take e5. And this knight's trapped. Okay, that's nuts. That is amazing. Okay, what else did I m was going on here? Because I know this is really complicated. I felt that it's just unjustified that White was winning this in the opening, but maybe my play was that terrible that I deserved to lose out of the opening. I don't know. It just felt like, what did I do to deserve to lose this? But maybe there was something. So after f4... Um... What did I play against f4? I played f6 to try to hold my center, but apparently I had something better here. Bishop f6. I did briefly look at this and I was scared. I was very scared by lots of scary tactics. Um, but apparently if I do bishop there, pawn takes, bishop takes, and I get my bishop pin, and we just trade material like there's no tomorrow. Um, apparently this is an equal endgame. Despite the uh, fact that I have three pawn islands, white has two pawn islands. Um, if I had to assess this, jeez, I have to give white a small plus here. Black has too many pawn islands. 
it's going to be very difficult for black to try to defend this position. If this were just rooks and a king uh, in these pawns, then that'd be more that'd be easier to defend. But with queens on the board, um, it's a lot easier to break up the pawn structure and make chaotic things happen that just ruin Black's day. Uh, so I'm not convinced that this is equal, but this is probably Black's best attempt. Um, oh, like, okay, Stockfish is still preferring white there. Right, so where did this all go wrong? Is the two knights defense just the mistake? No, d5. This is the provocative stuff that I've been playing. And then bishop e7 is the engine's preferred move, but what do masters play? I mean, masters aren't going to get themselves into playing d5 in the first place, but if they did, bishop c5 is what they'd play, or bishop e7. But white has a huge positive score after bishop e7, and after bishop c5, then... Um... Black is gambited material? Wait, what's going on here? Yeah, white's winning most of these games. Uh, okay, so, yeah, d5 is just way too aggressive. And black should either be content to play bishop c5, as I've played many times, or bishop e7, as I've also played many times. So, yeah, I should recognize that I just can't play d5 here, because it's way too risky. Um, even h6 is more favored by masters than d5 is. Jeez. Yeah, so, if I want to try to win this... Um, but I've seen white play c3 here to very good effect. Um, and I just need to prepare something here. A6. Okay. I could play this. I could definitely play that. Wow. Um, is there some way I can... Or do I just not like my opening repertoire at all with, like, knight f6? It seems like whatever I do with knight f6 is not working out. I should probably stick to my old favorite bishop c5 here. I guess I'll bear that in mind for future encounters. Um, okay, so we played d5, we played out of this opening book, um, and white just got a better position but did not convert it correctly at all. Knight e4 is not the best move. Queen e6, oh okay. I completely blanked here and thought this knight was attacking the e-pawn and that I had to play to e6. Obviously queen d7 is better, um, or preferable to queen e6, because this doesn't pin my knight to my queen. Um, and this is okay, but like this whole setup for black is not is suspect. And if I'm going to try this sort of thing, I should be slower about playing d5 if I get to play it in the opening at all. Or I should play um, 3 bishop c5 if I'm going to play more aggressive stuff anyway. Maybe I go back to playing bishop c5. But okay, so we get out of the opening, get all the way out here, and white plays knight e4 instead of developing a piece. And Queen g6 is not best. Apparently best is h5. I don't get that. Um, apparently queen g6 just throws my advantage away. I just didn't believe in h5. Like, what does h5 do? Oh. Now I'm threatening, like, rook d, g8, and g5 and stuff. And this knight's not really that effective here. Although g5 isn't happening, so uh, what am I really threatening? I'm stopping queen g4. Okay, that's the key. Um, whereas, like, here is best play is to uh, liquidate the queens and just have a really pleasant endgame.
Um, and I have to trade the queens, otherwise I might lose my knight on e6. So I had to play h4. Okay, well this Simon was not my soundest endeavor ever. Um, endeavor ever. Huh, that rhymes. Alright, so what have we in these other games? Um, the Blue Blitz. Well played Blue Blitz. I'll have to look at this. Let's open up the Master Endgame Explorer. Let's see, just what did I mess up? Because I've played this before. Knight g5, ship e3, 96. 96 is the third move among master moves, and the one with the greatest white winning ratio. Bishop b6 is fine, castle is fine. 96 not really fine because white plays f4 and white's winning all the time here. Oh, here I had to play queen b8. That was the move. That was the thing that friends and I had analyzed here. Um, oh, but then b3. Right. Wait, no. Each of these is equally popular. Um, takes, takes queen b6. Yeah, no, book is queen b6 here. I think black's okay. Yeah, this is playable for black. Um, hmm. Okay, so I messed up my opening. Um, and just got trashed here, right? Like I deserve to for messing it up. Um, and this just consistently went downhill the entire game. Okay, good to know. Far better to have that happen in an online game than an over-the-board game. So the moral of the story is, if you're going to play this opening... After bishop e3, don't play knight e6. I've done it. Ah, gosh. Um, for a better part of two decades, I've been playing moves like knight e6 in positions similar to this one. What have we here? Oh. Thanks for the spam. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, yeah, I didn't know that, that spam bots were becoming more frequent these days, but apparently they are. Um, but yeah, here, don't play knight e6, play like queen b8. This is the thing that friends and I had come up with for black here, um, based on an engine recommendation. Do I have anything else, like in any of these positions? So they castle. I could just play c5 here. I've never played c5 in this position. Why not? What have I been so, so afraid of here? Like f3? Is that what's scaring me? Um. My goodness, this feels a thousand times more comfortable than positions I've otherwise obtained. Um, c4 and knight c3. Oh, okay. Well, this is still better than the game position, but none of my pieces get developed. Um, bishop e7's playable. I've certainly tried this before. And I think I've played knight e6 in this position. I know there's only one database game with that, but I still think 96 is fine. I think tactically it works out, right? No. Wow. That's nuts. Oh wait, no, I've been in this position before, it sucks. Never mind. Oh, sorry, we concluded the simul about 15 minutes ago. Uh, I would start another one, except it seems like nobody's watching, so 
I'm tempted to wrap things up at this point. Um, but we want to finish looking at this game first. Yeah, this is, um, well, a scotch game. Uh, this is an opening which happens by a number of move orders. Or am I making that up? No, this is a scotch gambit. This only happens through the scotch gambit. Um, and, right, this is like the main line scotch gambit. Uh, note if you play bishop d7 here, uh, I think e6 is a world of pain, I think, if I remember my theory right. No, I'm thinking of something else. But we take here, and here, I mean, yeah, whatever. So, wait, I'm sorry, bishop d7 is what I played in the game. I'm thinking of something else. I'm forgetting what else I'm thinking of, but there's some positions where e6 ends up cracking things open, but not this one. Uh, bishop c5 is apparently playable. Oh, that's right. I have read about this. Is this the queen sack line? Is this the one where we take on c6? Uh, let's see, king f1. Queen h4, knight d4, c6, knight f3, knight g3, um, how did white survive this again? <laughs> Good luck finding these moves over the board, by the way. Yeah, it's a perpetual check. Um, that's a fun little perpetual. Um, yes, yeah, so this is the Scotch Gambit. I think it was Gary Lane who wrote a book about this. I could be wrong. But I think there was like a 100-page book with a white cover and brown text on the cover or something that was something about learning the Scotch Gambit. Let me see if I could find it. Scotch Gambit Opening Book. What was it called? It was an excellent book, which really surprised me. I don't think I'm going to manage to find it, though. No, it couldn't be by Schiller. That doesn't make sense. How to Play the Scotch Gambit. Is the name of the book? No. Okay, um, well, I enjoyed the book. I'm very confused because it has uh, Eric Schiller's name on the cover. But I really enjoyed the book. I'm very confused. Um, because I've read other Schiller books and not been very excited about them, but... Um, yeah, Schiller's book on the Scotch game, Gambit, whatever, is... Um, it covers a lot of topical lines and actually in a kind of systematic fashion um, I don't know like why I didn't retain all it that well but it seems to cover all the key variations at least for beginner and intermediate players um, it might not go as deep as some other books have gone on various openings but I think he at least covers the basics so you can play this and survive to move 10 or something and then be able to play theory of your own um, but yeah here uh, on bishop e3 I had to play what I had prepared which is queen b8 queen b8 b3 um, or even queen b8 knight c3 And the point is that this hits the rook with tempo, and that this knight is loose. So here I end up getting an exchange. Um, 
but white's attack is just not strong enough. So, like, I forget if it was this position or this one. One of these two positions where I had prepared queen b8. I think it was actually this one. But knowing that I could play it a move earlier with interesting results is kind of fun. But knight d2 holds this together. Oh, and then do I have to play knight e6 here? Is that what Stockfish is seriously recommending? That's interesting. Because knight e6 transposes the sort of tabia that I like to play. But here I have my queen developed, too. But this is not the master move. The master move is like anything else. Like, just castle. Castling is fine. I've played this. It's not the most exciting thing for black, because black never gets a chance to attack here. Um, I think I've tried bishop b6 before, again with a similar fate where white's the one attacking the entire game. Uh, so if you want to try to win this, if you want to really chance time it, um, then yeah, play queen b8 and see where you go. Um, your opponent might find all the engine moves, they might not, but either way it's going to be an exciting adventure. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't exactly like this for black. So yeah, I should go move earlier, uh, queen b8 here. No, I'm sorry, the move later. And then this one, play queen b8, which masters have played. So the key difference is that white's committed to f4 and is going to push f5 and that black's able to liquidate some more material in the center and get it to an end game which is slightly worse um yeah no black can play more ambitious stuff like this is the set of variations where black doesn't play bishop c5 in the opening um Certainly you could play the more aggressive stuff with bishop c5 here. It takes more study to be able to play this. And as we've seen down here, uh, white can immediately opt for a draw with knight takes c6. Uh, this is just a forced draw. Um, king f1 and queen h4. Uh, and white's knight makes it back to f3 and um, there's a perpetual that follows with best play. So if you want to draw, that's a way to secure it. Um, I wonder what's up with, like, king e2. Ha! <laughs> Queen d7 is the most popular move, but it's not even best. Uh, at least according to our silicon friend, bishop g4 is theoretically somehow better. And then queen d7. Okay, that's cute. What's the point? So if white tries something ambitious, uh, like knight d4, uh, we take the queen and then win the bishop. Okay, that makes sense. And if white tries pawn e6, then this disconnects our queen and our bishop. So we lose the bishop, but... Oh, we castle with an attack? Oh, now that's fantastic. How does this work? How is this anywhere close to working? You don't have to know this level of the theory. Like, we saw that there was already that other move. Um, what was it? Okay, this is just beautiful, but not necessarily that sound. Um, but yeah, queen d7 after king e2 is just winning. Because there's no bishop to hang on g4 anymore. So white can try to delay the inevitable here, but... Um, yeah, this position is kind of sad for white. 
Um, I'm still not seeing the knockout blow, and in fact, Stockfish says this is equal, but now it changes its mind. Okay, what's going on? Okay, this is nuts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, but the point is uh, here, I don't know all the theory, but if you study this bishop c5 stuff, it's the sharper way. It's the way for black to try to play for an advantage, assuming white doesn't do knight takes knight and just force a draw immediately. Um, that is, if they find or know king f1 instead of king e2. Um, apparently stockfish prefers black here. Okay, what the heck? What is this? I might have to start playing this now. Because I thought this was like a forced draw. Um, but... Okay, I'm going to study this some other time. Because we could spend like hours just looking at all the variations here. I'm not so convinced that this is great, but apparently it is somehow. Or at least it's fun. Yeah, King F1's the more natural move anyway. Um, Schiller's opinion was that Knight Takes Knight was a draw. If I'm remembering right from a book I read about two decades ago, I think that was his consensus or opinion on this position. But many books have been written on this opening since. Um, even Lee Chess's master database has quite a few games. And you could always play against uh, the Silicon Beast and try to figure out what's going on. But, yeah, if you want to try to play to win this, don't play bishop d7, play bishop c5. Um, it's much sharper, it's much more challenging. But, given that my track record with bishop d7 is pretty terrible. I should play bishop c5 anyway and just see how it goes. Oh boy. Well, that's good to know. If I ever get that over the board, we know what to do. We play bishop c5 and go where the wind may take us and learn something the next time we lose it. Um, yeah, engines are always improving too. Um, yeah, Cormac got good 14 moves in this opening. Um, this is pretty equal throughout. I was impressed by this h6, that it was as strong as it was. Um, which kind of like rebuffs my whole bishop g5 idea. Um, okay, my reflex upon seeing h6 is that I should have played f4 here. But the most popular master move is knight f3. What's the big idea with that? Is it that if black plays knight f5, I just play g4? Oh, come on. How is this only played once in the one time it was played white lost? That's not good. Okay, so... White should defend the center. Oh, and just play sane moves. Well, that's kind of a challenging task for me, because I like to play, like, ridiculous moves. Um, playing reasonable moves is just not my style. But apparently that's a way for white to play this. Um, but more popular than knight of... Well, yeah, knight of three is most popular. F4 does not win as much, but... Oh! Oh, wow. Okay, so did I mess something up before this? Uh, <laughs> okay, so apparently e6 is a good, it's at least a reasonable way to counter um, two knight c3. Interesting. Well, yeah, so 
But more importantly, um, when white tries to play a winnower, black can play the Paulson here. This is making me seriously consider taking up the French with black. Like, if you could play three knight c6, and it's not bad, um, then this might be fun to do as black. Because white's not going to take on d5, and if white pushes e5, white gets the misery that happened in the game. I like this. I've never... Well, it's been a very long time since I've seen this, but... It looks very reasonable. Wow. Oh, how do you use the 3D board? Um, I would say you go uh, to the top of the screen and click on your name and s select like board geometry and pick 3D. Except I have my name hidden here because it kind of makes the stream layout look ugly. Um, but yeah, that's where you would go to do that. Um. <laughs> like, I don't know. This this is a fun way for white or black to approach this position. This is making me seriously consider playing the French, just because like this is a Nimzovich defense. Well, it's no, it's not. A Nimzovich defense would be. Uh, this. This is not a Nimzovich. Um, this is just a pulse in French. But still, um, I kind of like this. And yeah, white can do things to preserve a small advantage, but this is not black getting rolled over. Like, this is theoretical stuff, and like, you have Ponomaryov and Timofeev and such playing this. So it's not like this is a bad opening. Uh, you got Joe Bava playing black. Three times here. One, two, and three. Now maybe these are all like, blitz games or something, but they're different years. So it's like, Joe Bava is stuck with this. Man, this is cool. Um, cause how does white push for an advantage with this? That's really tricky. And if white does the silly thing I did, then knight e7 is just fine. And white's immediate reaction is bishop g5 trying to punish this. And okay, apparently uh, h6 is not in the master database, but um like okay bishop c1 really i thought bishop e3 was best because it protects my center but the center doesn't need protection um uh, but black doesn't have to play h6 right away um yeah i like queen d7 here not just because of the result, but because this breaks the pin. And White's Bishop is still kind of in limbo here. Uh, if White ever wanted to start a king's side attack, he'd have to move the bishop out of the way. Um, not entirely clear on how black proceeds. So maybe I'm not liking this as much. I don't know. But the fact that this gets White out of book and allows you to play a game of chess... And it's not a Karokan. Um, those two things definitely count in its favor. Um, it's trendy like a year ago. Huh. Yeah, you've been punished for pawn h6. But if the bishop does back off, you have this nice pawn formation for castling. Yeah, that's true. Um, so I wonder how white's supposed to deal with this. I mean, Stockfish likes this idea of backing off. If white backs off all the way. Um, it's a little bit of give and a little bit of take here. 
Wait, knight b8, what the heck? Okay, stockfish is drunk. Or just confused. It's trying to refute, like, the French. And it's not so clear how to do that. Um, hmm. But also, I didn't need to play bishop g5 in the first place. Like, knight f3 is perfectly reasonable. But if I'm going to play knight f3 anyway, then why did I push e5? I pushed e5 to deal with the threat on the d-pawn, which I didn't know how to deal with. Whereas I could have just played knight f3 directly. Um, and so the key is that I have to know this stuff. 92. Uh, yeah, now I've looked at bishop d3 before. I think knight e2 is more interesting here. Um, although I'm not so sure that white plays knight g3 straight away. Even though masters like the move, I just feel like white's losing potential here somehow by doing that. There's got to be something better than knight to g3. Even though it's the most popular move. Yeah, bishop e3 looks fine. Um, Sockfish prefers knight g3, but I'm not convinced. Yeah, I like this developing move. This does take us out of the databases, but how bad can it be? Black wants to liquidate. Uh, does white do knight takes or bishop, or pawn takes, rather? I think knight takes. That way, um, we're delaying knight or bishop to c5 as long as possible. But this position's opening up, and our bishop is kind of silly on e3 now. So I guess maybe knight to g3 is actually right. But if knight g3 is right, then maybe we shouldn't be playing knight d2 in the first place. Maybe we should stick with the well-known theory. And I just have to understand for myself, what does this theory mean? Uh, white can gambit a pawn, or white can play this. And... Um, hmm. I don't like knight takes bishop. I know it's the most popular move. I know the results say that white's winning a lot there. But it feels like um, that bishop on d2 is white's worst piece. So trading black's best piece for white's worst piece doesn't make sense to me. But it's the most popular master move by far. But I don't like it. Um, so there's bishop takes c3, which... Hmm... This seems to give away all black's winning chances, because then he's left with his bad bishop and nothing to compensate for his silly position. Or he could take here and have some chance of having a reasonable endgame. And regardless how white recaptures, you have an interesting endgame ahead. Uh, what's wrong with the Karo? Um, Zoggy Addict says that if you, have the, if you play the Karo, you have no soul. He might be right. I might be joking, but I don't know. I've looked at the Karo. It just does not inspire me at all. It is solid and boring. And it just It's too boring. I can't play it. Um, yeah, bishop g5 is not the way to go. You're right. Just like knight f3 and all that. And just develop and stuff. Oh, well, I mean, there's a lot of pieces on the board. I'm talking about, like, when a few more pieces get traded, some kind of endgame is going to result here. Uh, if bishop takes straight away, uh, yeah, then black should take. And now we are seriously talking about an endgame right out of the opening. Like, I don't think either player is going to checkmate the opposing king out of this opening formation here. 
Um, like it's going to play b6 and somehow develop this bishop and you know stuff's going to happen. I don't like knight a5 because it puts the knight on the rim. That's just kind of silly. Queen e7 kind of makes some sense, but I'd, ra I'd sooner play bishop d7 or b6 here than move my queen so early. Yeah, there are some ways to play interesting Karo games. Um, at least from the white side, yes. Um, it requires a little bit of cooperation from black, I think. Yeah, this looks solid. Uh, so yeah, like I'm saying, if white takes on c3 with the bishop, we are talking about an endgame there. If he does pawn takes, then we're playing this position, and there's a middle game that results, and you know, we have to play an entire game of chess here. But this is pretty solid, too. I'm not totally versed in what black should do here to try to develop and not get his king clobbered, but it feels like black has got an okay game at this point and has not had to suffer through many of the things that I've seen happen in the French. It feels like Black has got enough space for his pieces and might eventually be able to get some kind of pawn break or something going. I'm not sure how, but this feels much freer than the position that has all the minor pieces still on the board. This feels much more comfortable. Yeah, no, I think um, most players would just play pawn takes, like you suggest here. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I guess I call this a very early endgame. Because I don't think anybody's going to get checkmated here. I think it's a matter of just figuring out how to activate your remaining pieces and try to promote a pawn. Um, for sure, pawn takes here is the more interesting way to go even though I would not call this an endgame. Um, but I think black is fine here and doesn't have... he is not nearly as cramped as in like a mainline French. This Paulson French is really interesting. Anyway, I'm not a Paulson expert. I don't know much about chess openings, but we're learning together. Um, so we have knight f5. was played in the game and um, I just tried to develop because I was afraid of this queen h4 arising at some point. Well, Stockfish kind of likes my move, so that's okay. But, um, yeah, this is still equally free for black. And in fact, now black's got the dark squared bishop from white, and so black's got the bishop pair. Um, so, <laughs> this is going pretty well for black, not gonna lie. I did figure out how to start developing my pieces, but um, a3 and queen d2 are engine top recommendations here. Queen d2 makes some sense. a3 confuses me. Well, okay, so white's not going to get a king side pawn break anytime soon. So taking space on the queen side makes sense. So a3 does make some sense. And it allows white to play bishop d3 and not get the bishop harassed. Um, oh, knight a5. That's cool. If you can get away with that here, that's pretty nice. Um, hmm. Interesting. I mean, certainly during the game I was afraid of knight a5, but I didn't have time to calculate it. I just figured I'd let it happen and see where we went. Us intending knight d2 against it, if I had to. But I didn't think I had to resort to such drastic measures, and I didn't think that would do anything to stop c5 anyway. Um, so what if knight a5? What if... We try to play c5 straight away here, like I was afraid of. Oh, then Stockfish is saying I should play the pawn to e4. 
Um, or that failing, just queen d2 and try to get my pieces out. Um, I would started to look at some of this, but again, I was in time pressure. Or rather, I was playing six games in a simul and didn't want to clutter my head with all these possible variations of what could possibly happen. King h1 makes sense. And yeah, I have no idea what's going on here. But it looks good for black. Because if you can get knight c6 back in, um, black's got a very good central presence. And white's pawn structure is pretty meh. And white's not winning on d5, somehow. How is white not winning the d5 pawn? E D five C D four or E D five. Well if E D five works, something's Okay, yeah, it makes sense you'd have to do C D four here. And then White has to move the knight away. And can't take on D four because what? Because, oh, oh, interesting. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then if you try to hack down the center, then bishop e6, right? They just take on e5. Okay, so, so white's not winning the center, so this is just good for black. This is complicated. Oh, well, yeah, you know, it was a 2020 simul. I think I had burned, I don't know, somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes on all the boards by now. So that's, I don't know, almost half my time. But, yeah, like early in the game, everybody's moving quickly. And if I'm stopping to explain things on every board, then I can actually be in time pressure. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, this is a really good game. And gives us a lot of things to look at. A6 is a little slower. Uh, so I resorted to this, which I've played in other positions. This felt kind of like a stonewall. Except, obviously, it isn't. Like, in a stonewall, white's pieces would be better placed to just immediately launch a kingside attack. And then this queen to e1 to g3 transfer would be a lot more convincing. Here, it's just nonsense. And b5 um, is a pretty solid way to counter it, preparing c5. B6 is reasonable too, so you could get the bishop on B7 and play C5. Um, we saw knight B4, which is... Oh, I have bishop D1. Okay, I saw that knight E1 was not available here. And so I kind of freaked out. Um, bishop D1 is really clever. It's ridiculous, which is pretty funny. Um... Like normally you'd not put your bishop on the first rank, but here, um, because you can't go to d3 without knight takes bishop, bishop d1 makes some sense, and the bishop's not going to b5 anyway, so yeah. Um, it does kind of entomb the rook on c1, or e a1 rather, um, but that rook's eventually going to escape somehow, probably on the c-file. Um, and I can't go over to c1. Well, I could. Why, why is rook c1 not suggested? Is it just that bad of a move? Is it just way too slow for white? Does it not do anything? I wonder. Um, unfortunately, I see the chat window. It's not hooked up to this here. I don't have a way to click on that link to bring up the game. Uh, sorry about that. So, yeah, b5, another good move. 
Although, wait, why did I not play a4? a4 looks like the fun move to play here. Why did I settle on a3? I don't know. So... <laughs> oh, man. Well, okay. Oh, I was so excited about playing b4. That's right. I'm like, hey, I stopped black from playing c5. And now I can finally start to figure out where I want to put my pieces, maybe? Question mark? And, okay, yeah, black does have the bishop pair on a, in a closed position, so this is preferable for white. But a4 was the more fun way to play this. Just trying to blast open lines and activate the pieces with the rook, with the knight still on b4 would have led to much more fun. But I don't have a bishop here, so maybe it's not so fun. Maybe this was the better way to go. I don't know. Uh, bishop b4 unfortunately did not quite cut it here. Uh, sorry, but yeah, you did make it a good... Um, you made it to move 14 here. Playing an excellent game. Bishop b4 launches this idea of trying to push the queen side pawns. Unfortunately, I just have too much material um, ready to stop the pawns. Uh, yeah, understandably, black is getting very antsy in this position. Uh, I would probably play bishop d or bishop b7 like Stockfish is recommending here, just because I have some optimism that like I'll need this square attacked somehow. But then again, I'm kind of imagining this is a stone wall where black does want to control the center square indirectly so you could plant the knight there. Um, so yeah, I would probably opt for bishop b7 because it like helps black connect all the rest of his pieces together. But it's not so clear what black's going to do after that. Um... It's not so clear what white's doing either, because white's given up all his useful pawn breaks. So he kind of has to launch a kingside attack, I think. But that's pretty challenging to do. Maybe, like, I see Stockfish recommending trying to shuffle this knight around and put it up there. So maybe white does some of that, plays some bishop d3, tries to put the rooks on the kingside, and hopes that I don't know, to get some kind of superior endgame. Because I really think black's kingside is solid enough to weather whatever white can throw at it. Um, yeah. Interesting. I think your next alt's going to be duck farmer. That's pretty cool. Um... Yeah, so this is a very interesting Paulson game we played here. I guess the takeaway is that um, even though this is a Paulson, black does need to be thinking about playing c5, especially when white doesn't have a bishop to protect against c5 anymore. Um, or if black's not going to play c5, then maybe think about trying to play f6 to chip at this and somehow let the bishop out through e6. Maybe somehow the bishop gets out this way. I don't know. Um, but yeah, in order to activate this bishop, you have to like put your pawns on dark squares so the light-squared bishop can get around it. Or you just have to suffer in silence in a French, which some people have done, and sometimes you can draw that way. Um, but my style is much more aggressive than that. So you wouldn't see me try that, but I've certainly seen people just try to hold the position together and not make any pawn weaknesses and see like if white overextends himself. Um, yeah, Zug would have moved his knight around that much and won. Yeah, Zug's done some interesting maneuvers, that's for sure. You thought about, yeah, I, I've not seriously taken pawn f6 here because, like, tactically I think it's unsound, but I think in general, like, there are numerous French positions where black's only resource, because black can't play c5 anymore, 
Uh, I think black sometimes has is forced to play f6 um, under circumstances where white doesn't have so much control of e4 and e5. Like here, I've got pretty solid control of a lot of squares over here. So it's not... I'm, here, I don't think that uh, f6 would quite work out because I could just like put my bishop here and play a3 and like this is a hole and I'm like poised to pick off a lot of squares and holes that are left around. Um, but sometimes black is forced to play f6 because they can't play on the queen side. It's usually when white's done something pretty eccentric. But, um, but yeah, in general, I think black just has to be aiming to play c5. Otherwise, it's just very difficult to get this bishop out. Um, I don't know, like, if he had played b6, I probably would have done something like a3 and bishop d3 and queen e2, stopping bishop a6. Um, so that's just why I'm saying you have to have, like, some kind of pawn lever to try to undermine white's center and make some targets or something so that your pieces can get out. Um, but yeah, this is pretty solid. And then, unfortunately, just the sacrifice didn't quite work out. Um, in part because white just has this immediate sham sacrifice that just takes things apart. And obviously you can't continue this sequence with just like this because I have this pin. Otherwise, um, maybe this could have worked out a bit better. Um, like two pawns for the bishop is okay. Um, White's probably still winning this, but the fact that I can immediately regain a pawn, just, yeah. It was an interesting game, that's for sure. It embarrassed me quite a bit. <laughs> Just, I don't know. I guess I didn't expect to land myself in a French. And even when I did land in a French, I didn't expect this to, like, completely throw me off my game. So, yeah, that was really well... That was a good surprise here. Um, and some decent play following that up and just taking this and... Yeah. Um... So I've got quite a few things to learn from this. Probably for me the most important of these things is don't immediately play e5 cuz like there's no benefit to it cuz like the Paulsons actually sound and I should just play knight f3. And assuming white or black does the reasonable thing, I should just play the main line here uh with pawn takes and bishop e7 and recognize that I've got a slightly advantageous position and I have to play a chess game here. And I don't even get the luxury of trading into an end game. I have to actually play a middle game. Um, but that's what I get for trying to get an advantage against the French. I don't know, like, Bishop d3 is playable, I guess? How does this go? Bishop g5, de4, bishop e4, h6, takes, takes, castle. Here I'm not getting an endgame either. Or rather, any, like, taking on c6 just gives me a bad position. Um, so I have to play a middle game here as well. Um, I kind of like this position, but... I feel like black's going to get c5 in pretty quickly anyway. Um, so bishop g5 doesn't quite cut it here in my opinion. Even though it's like overwhelmingly the most favorite move of masters after bishop b4. Hmm, mm -mm, do I do this? How much trouble am I asking for? Do I gambit the pawn just for the sake of having a fun position? Okay, bishop a3 is apparently not sound. Okay, I can't confuse this with other gambit openings, I know, so I have to develop. Yeah, I'll have to figure out what to do against this. Why not just 4e5? Well, 
after four e5, I just feel like white's overextended. I think that this is just sound for black. I don't see a way to exploit this position. Um, Cause like, I know this is the preferred master line or popular variation or whatever, but I just don't believe in this for white. I don't think this offers winning chances um, against a prepared opponent. I think that pawn on e5 is overextended. Oh, 5e5. Okay. So yeah, knight f3, knight f6, 5e5. This is well-known theory. Um, yeah, this is just known to be... In fact, this might be what I should do. Um, I'm just trying to look for some kind of side variation that doesn't require me to play this. Because here I don't get to trade into an endgame. And I like my endgames. I really do. So being forced to play a middle game is just no fun for me. I have, like, no way to trade into an endgame here. Um... It's really complicated, but yeah, it's perfectly reasonable for white. A lot of people would play this. It's just, I like my end games a lot, and I have no control over what end game results from this. And so I have to like be a good chess player or something to play this position. Um, I like positions where I can constantly evaluate if I trade these three or four pieces, what happens? And what are my chances here? But, yeah, no, this is perfectly fine. It's just, like, white has no pawn breaks. White has no king's side attack. It's just, yeah. It's a good position. It's just, I, it's not at all my style. I prefer positions where there's just some sort of tactical melee going on, and it's not obviously... Well, I say it's not obviously worse for me, but honestly my style is getting positions which are pretty terrible, and trying to find ways to make them work. But, uh, yeah, I like this bishop d3. This looks intriguing. I still think bishop b4 is probably best here. Um, no, oh, I can castle here? Is this so? Ha! <laughs> okay, now we're talking. Here we have some interesting pawn imbalances. Here white has some control over what pieces get traded and when they get traded. How is this anywhere... Like, what happened that these these positions were reached? And it's not like one player vastly outrates the other in every one of these matches here. What in the world is... I'm very confused. On multiple levels. One, white has the bishop pair. Okay, the pawn structure is kind of symmetric and white has doubled pawns, but I still would imagine the bishop pair would be preferable. Except the c1 bishop has kind of a hard time developing, so maybe not. But two, like, what's with these lopsided results here? This kind of tells me something's up, but I'm not sure what. Other than maybe white just doesn't know the theory, so white opted for this instead. But it seems perfectly fine. Like, castling, just trying to... I don't get it. Is pawn takes not best? You have to take the pawn, otherwise you're getting hurt. Um, so, yeah, I just don't get it. I guess white wins against everything other than pawn takes pawn, and the players who play pawn takes pawn just happen to have the better end of it. I'm confused. Hey, thanks. 
Yep. We have some fun with Crazy House AI from time to time. It was really cool that um, when Ferdinand Muska uh, last December put together the Crazy House uh, engine championship, uh, the qualification bracket, and then the championship round itself. That was really exciting to commentate on, even though it was like extremely early in the morning. Uh, my voice wasn't warmed up for that. At least we were able to chat and watch the games together, which is pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, this Paulson stuff seems to hold for black. And I'm not seeing an exciting way for white to play this. Or a dynamic way for white to play this. It seems like you get a pretty static position regardless what white does. And I'm trying to find some kind of novelty to justify this to myself. This is fun to play. And I'm just not at all convinced. Like, I've certainly seen this mainline theory before, and, like, every expert and above knows this stuff cold. And a lot of players at the intermediate level have seen it all before, too. And it's just not fun to play the sort of thing that's been played hundreds of times before. Um, so e takes d5 is playable here. Okay. Uh, e takes d5 is apparently black's best. Now we castle, castle, h3. Wait, why is black castling here? Why isn't black Oh, bishop g4 is played. Okay, that makes sense. Even though this allows a check. Bishop e2 is not the critical move here. Um, yeah, I think this is the more... F well, this is a symmetrical pawn structure. White has no advantage here other than this temporary development advantage, which disappears quite quickly. So that's why white wants to castle, but... Okay, is there no other way for white to develop here? What about queen d3? Why is queen d3 not a, th a thing here? Queen d3 knight b4, queen e2... Pawn takes, okay, and d4 is kind of loose. Huh. Stonewall d4, and yes, e4, and bls. <laughs> yeah, no, the French is one of my blind spots. Um, like, for a number of years against a French, um, what I had prepared uh, was just pawn takes pawn. Um, and so it's just an exchange French. So this is the sort of stuff I played as white, but this is when I was like 1500, 1600 or something, I was playing this and just outplaying my opponent for the rest of the game because they expected to play French and we didn't get um, a normal French position. Um, is there some way via this move order that I can do anything that's obscure to keep things exciting somehow for me? I don't think so. Um, hmm. Yeah, so if I'm looking at all these lines, it feels like it, like the knight of three, knight of six immediately equalizes, so I have to do this to try to win. And knight g e7 looks strong, very strong. Um, so what do I do here? This is where I'd like to play some completely nuts oddball move like g4. 
Um, like I said, I don't like going through the waters that have been trekked a thousand times, so F6. Um, my first impulse here is F4. Wait, takes takes in G5. What's this about? Um, hmm. Looks like F4 gets my center blown to pieces. Because I've made too many pawn moves. So I have to take here. And G5 is apparently the best way to continue? No, bishop g2 is playable. Um, but this pawn on g4 is super exposed, so might as well push it straight away. Oh, what? Now it's thinking knight f3 is okay. Okay, this obviously deserves further examination, and it's never been played in a master game. If this refutes the Paulson. I'll be so impressed. Because, like, how does no Grandmaster ever come up with this? G5 looks like the fun way to play this. So we're playing G5. And... yeah. Okay, this is a way I can play chess and still enjoy it. There we go. Yeah. So if I, like, create a thematic pulse and tournament on here sometime... Maybe this is what we'll look at. Um, yeah, it looks kind of fun. Stockfish prefers black. I don't care. I mean, I've played the fried liver with black, and that's, like, almost refuted, so I don't mind being point two pawns worse if it means I get a fun game. Um... Yeah, this looks like a good developing move. And if queen h5 were sound at all, um, the engine would strongly recommend it. And that's, I don't see such a strong recommendation here. So, you know, white should probably just continue development with knight f3. And just pretend we're playing a normal game. Uh, surely black castles, but I don't know. I can understand why no master plays this, because it's, it's like ridiculous. Um, but it does stop knight f5, that's for sure. But there's no need to go to such extreme lengths to stop the move. Uh, we can play knight c e2. And then if knight f5. Well, it's recommending knight f3. Here, this is probably safer. No. Knight h4 is actually playable here. What gives? Oh, I have no way to harass the knight. That's right. So that's why I play g4 before knight f5. But that completely derails black, who has never seen this before. Or if they have, at least it's still a fun game. Okay. Well, engine evaluations aside, g4 looks fun. Um, it's probably unsound, but that's okay. That's never stopped me before. Um, and, yeah, white has plenty of chances of getting some kind of imbalance in this position. Good, bad, or otherwise. Um, things are going to be imbalanced, that's for sure. Okay, but yeah, very interesting game. Um, making me seriously consider trying to Paulson with black. Uh, let's play a couple Blitz games. Maybe we can get a Paulson here. Probably not. I'm just gonna jinx it, you know. Alright, so... Here we are against uh, 1800. Got a Sicilian. Maybe we can get... I don't know. One of my more fun Sicilians. He's probably going to play a Nidorf. They all play the Nidorf. This is what I do against the Nidorf. This is my own little um, technique here. So we're going to play a couple games here and then wrap this up and 
uh, take a look at other people's streams. I see chess doctors are streaming, so they're cool people. Um, right, everybody plays e5 here. And even though you get this nice little pin, it's not totally clear what black's doing. Um, I'm just going to guard this pawn and continue guarding it. All right, so, all right, this does threaten to take on e4. So I forget if I have to play queen e2 or rook e1 or what here. Yeah, queen e2, I think, is forced. Spent more than a year on tactics. Need some openings. Yeah. I think you got some openings down. Um, I'm trying to remember what it was. I've certainly heard masters speak about or write about. Um, don't necessarily work worry about memorizing particular variations, but just try to learn from master games or other kinds of games. Um, just what are the key ideas in each opening? In fact, yeah, that's a Lev Albert idea that each opening has key positions. Like here, if you're playing this kind of position and White's e-pawn is a big target, you want to play b4 to undermine the knight and then black just wins material. Uh, it's a key idea in this position. And I fell hook, line, and sinker for it, apparently. I can't do knight d5 because that's an elastic band protecting e7. So I have to do this. And I think now I'm just down a pawn. Because he takes on d5 either way. If he's got his wits about him, he'll do knight takes. Otherwise, he's doing bishop takes. Um, if bishop takes, I might have some fun tactics here. But yeah, chances are I'm just losing a pawn here for nothing. Oh, cool. Yeah, I think I think there was a point that Lev Albert underscored in his book, Pierce Alert. Yep, so there it is. I've given away a pawn. For nothing. Here, take this extra pawn. He's not taking it. Um, nah, I didn't think so. Alright, so I need a way to get some activity here. Um, oh wait, I could trade a knight for two pawns and a rook. Uh, I'm sorry, trade my knight and bishop for two pawns and a rook. I don't know if I want to do that. But I don't know if I have a choice. I get mated if I do that. I shouldn't do that. Um, Here. Here's how we do it. This threatens to win the pawn. Um... But much more importantly, now I can actually do knight takes e5 because I have two pieces teamed up on a8. So what this is all saying is that his bishop's on the wrong square. He need this bishop on the long diagonal to counteract this battery that I've now formed. Oh. Or, yeah, I could have just taken the pawn because the d-pawn's pinned. Um, yeah, there's that too. Uh, oh god. <laughs> I am the greatest chess player ever. Or not. <laughs> okay, well, that's embarrassing. Oh, man. I came up with this beautiful... Mm, it's all ruined. It's all ruined. <laughs> Okay. Well, I should just take the pawn now, right? Okay, we're taking it. Swallowing our pride and taking it. 
In fact, we kind of have to, because even though this tactic of taking twice on A8 no longer works out, the original idea, which we had all along, is that this pawn is pinned. Ah, uh, okay. Well, um, so I should not play knight c6, or knight c4. I guess both of them lose the knight. Um, in various... Well, knight c6 doesn't lose the knight. Yeah, let's play knight c6. That looks fun. Yeah, it's hard to compete with a room full of chess players. That's true. All right. So, let's see. Oh, I can't. Oh, this is tricky. Okay, we're going to take the pawn. I'm just going to keep taking things until he runs out of things to be taken. Oh, that does defend stuff pretty adequately. Um, okay. This is disgusting. Ha! Didn't see that now, did you? Okay. Ah, oh, dear. I'm turning into a bullet player. Well, that was an exciting game. Um... Yeah, it's unfortunate the way that played out. Just develop this. And make sure not to undermine like the base of my pawn chain. I say as I undermine it. Um okay. Wow. What an awful position. <laughs> Holy smokes. Okay, I have to take this way. Oh my goodness. How did I manage to make this so difficult for myself? There we go. I swear I can win some endgames once in a while. Maybe. If I'm lucky. Oh my no. Okay. Ha ha! I'm so good at chess when I play good moves. Uh, okay, don't push the pawns. Pushing the pawns is a trap. Okay, hit the bishop. Okay, wow. Well, that was a roller coaster and a half. Oh my goodness. Um, one more? new opponent and then we go watch chess doctors because surely they're playing better moves than I am alright Paulson here we go this is assuming he plays oh no knight c3 alright cool so that thing that I said about playing uh, the exchange all these years um, I wasn't joking I'm actually kind of good at this particular sub-variation. Um, knowing that, I've just, like, jinxed myself, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Also, I'm playing to try to win this with black, which is not so wise. I should have done bishop e6. This is okay. Is he seriously taking on g6? No, he's not taking on g6. Oh, sorry for confusing y'all. Um, okay. We're gonna stop the knight from going into f4. Anything your king can do, my king can do better. Um, so this looks fine. Are we going to do knight c3? No, we're not. Okay. So 
So stop knight b5. Of course he plays c4. Um, but here I just develop. What? No. What kind of move is that? That's ridiculous. How is that in any way a good move? I mean, this lets me play with fire. I like playing with fire. Okay. So I've got this nice little fork, which is going to happen. I guess knight on c4 covers that fork square. But somehow we'll find a way to make this fork decide the game. Oh, why does it say that? It's because sometimes, um, you know, people discuss stuff and I can't, like, fully control that. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. Yeah, taking on d4 is a little too much fire. That was my original idea here. It does not at all work. So... Do I not play b5? b5 looks tempting. b5 looks very tempting. We're playing b5 and seeing where we go. If knight a6, king b7, stuff, stuff, stuff happens. So... You remember I was talking about this fork, right? gonna find a way. Do I not just trade immediately? Let's do it. Who called it? <laughs> I mean that's not instantly decisive but this is me taking the driver's seat. I'm definitely the one conducting an attack here. Um, which doesn't work at all. Um, that was really clever. Well played, sir. Let me just promote. Okay, well... So, we just concluded that the French is refuted. Um, that did decide the game, that's for sure. Just not the way that we wanted it to. Alright. It's possible I might not be playing my best today. Um, why did I not play bishop c4? Here, let's do this. Why not take the pawn first? Because that would have been the good move. Okay. Um, that's why not. <laughs> okay. Well... We projected confidence, that's for sure. That'll show him. <laughs> Alright, take my pawn. Uh, this guy's rated 2100. I can't just, like, play around with him. I have to actually play good moves. So we'll try to play good moves. We'll endeavor not to play moves that suck. I know that's quite the adventure, um, but I might somehow manage to be able to do that. Um, am I somehow winning this? This feels very winning. Like, I have this check, I have this check. I just don't know. We're going to do this and see where it ends up. Because this does not feel right for black. He might have to play king f8 here. But if he does, I might have knight c4 trying to pin and win the queen. This could get quite ugly for black. Oh, sorry about the title. Yeah, we're just trying to wrap things up on a note where I'm not losing the last game. Of course, um, hmm. 
Here, let's change the stream title anyway. Uh, title 3 plus 2 fun. Okay. And we're also taking leechess.org out of the stream title so that, like, you know, if I happen to hang all my pieces and embarrass myself, only we who are here are going to see that. But also this lets me try to wrap things up. So I think I'm winning material? Maybe? Um, feels like Black has not played things correctly. Now, that said, I've not played things correctly either, but whatever. We're going to have some fun here. So this knight's pinned to the queen. So if I do this, everything's pinned to everything. Like, 35 pieces are hanging here. But I think white's doing okay. Maybe. Okay. What? Huh? Why? Brilliant. I found a move that doesn't hang a piece. I am so smart. I am so smart. S-M-R-T. S-M-A-R-T. Alright, so. Good old Simpsons reference. Um... Yeah, I'll just hit the bishop. And he probably plays bishop c5 or something, or I don't know. I think we got this. I think I finally managed to win a chess game. Maybe. Maybe not. Here. Would you care to move the rook away? Because that rook's kind of in the way of this checkmate, so if you could just, like, push it to the side, like, I don't know, up here and hit my bishop or something, that'd be great. Alright, so it's not happening. Alright, we'll take that. And, I don't know, just bring the other rook to the open file? Like, as black, I probably would have conceded. I'm not one much for conceding, but this just does not look fun for black. Okay, I don't have any brilliant sacrifice here, so I should probably just take d4. Um, feels like there should be something here. There just isn't. So we'll take the pawn, get our rooks forked. Um, I don't have a mate. Why don't I have a mate? Okay, so I have to double check so that I can give rook c4 check. Oh, actually I might have a mate here. King c8. Bishop d6, and uh, rook a4 mate. I found it! Wow. Okay. Yeah, we got it. Oh, do we give him the rematch, guys? Do we give him it? Okay, fine, we do. We can't end it on, like, one of my most brilliant games ever. Okay, we're going to go back to playing this. Um, I don't know. D5. <laughs> We're going to play increasingly weird things until he refuses to rematch us anymore. That's the strategy. So, we're going to see how many openings we can get away with before he gets completely weirded out by our choice of openings. Yeah, this isn't even weird, though. We've not gotten there yet. How do you improve in cheese? Uh, here it improves with age. But um, with chess, um, I don't know, learn some end games. And learn some middle games and learn some openings. Um, and 
Yep, sorry. We'll somehow manage to wrap this up. What time is it? Okay, it's not too late just yet. Feels a lot later than it is. Okay, that's cute. Um, okay. Yep, you get that. Congratulations. So, rook, bishop, and pawn for a queen. That's a fun little exchange. Here, I'm trying to take control of the light squares. So, to do that, I've got to get this knight off the board. Um, and I'd prefer to do that with tempo if I could. Alright, so he's actually threatening to get... Well, no, he could play knight e2. I'm not afraid of knight e2. He should play bishop c6 just to mess with me. I'm not sure if I'd sack the exchange if he plays bishop c6. No, I played knight d7. Except then he's got... Uh, his knight can move. Um... Okay, so that's not a threat. It feels like a threat, but it isn't one. Um, so I should bring my king forward? Question mark? Whatever, we'll do it. Let's see where we end up. Stops bishop c6. Okay, um, I want better light square control, so I'll gladly accept that exchange. Wait, do I, I can't take on d2. So if I want the light squares, I've got to play f5. Uh-oh, I'm losing material. Uh, this is not good. My king's on a bad square. Oh, now I can play bishop d2. Well, that's pretty cool. Except then he plays b4, but then I retreat. My head is spinning. I'm trying to figure out all these complications. Um, I have to play bishop d2, but it's not working. Or if it does work, it's borderline working if it works. Um, I think though my king has to drop back to like e6 or something. I can't just take on e5 straight away because tactics. Yeah, I think if he does d takes e, I think I have to play king e6. Or rather, in this line, I think that's forced. Oh, but my rook is kind of prone. Um, not liking this for black. I am up upon this one instant. But yeah, the fact that d4 allows me to play bishop d2 is pretty hilarious. Alright, so here I was thinking I needed to play king e6. Because I think everything else... I mean, it's possible king d7 might be okay, but um, this has got to be the move, right? And the idea is that I get to move my bishop with tempo. Now taking e5 would lose um, my bishop. Okay, so this way I 
get to move my bishop before he has a chance to take it. Um, now he's threatening rook d5, among other things. Okay. I guess I have to take this. Or at least if I'm trying to win, I have to take that. Oh, this is scary. Well, whatever. Let's go where the wind may take us. Um, what the heck? Let's play the sun game. Seems like a fun end game. Okay. Rook d7 is the only winning try. I think. Right, so, wait, do I take this here? This does not look so good for white. There we go. Easy peasy. Just kidding, of course, but um, my opponent can't be too happy after those two games in a row. How did we even get this position? Like, what was the adventure that led up to this? Um, oh right! He played 3g3. And we got this fun little thing. Which was an interesting game, that's for sure. Let's bookmark that. But, uh, like I said, end games. You know? Gotta know when to hold them, when to fold them. Uh, no, I, I'm joking, but I think I played that one okay. I think that's a reasonable note to go out on. So, oh man, more and more people are showing up. Good gravy. Um, no, we're gonna go over and watch uh, Chess Doctors. So let me figure out how to set that up, and we'll be right over there. Just doctors are pretty cool people. I hope that they're not wrapping up too, because that would make this unfortunate timing. Um, let's see. So yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. It's been an interesting session here. Thanks to those playing in the simul and analyzing afterward. That's been good fun. Oh, looks like they have also wrapped up, so we're going to go watch uh, Fiona instead. Always a good decision. So, yeah. Okay, cool. It's been fun. Our host, Rosen. Is Rosen around? If Rosen's around, we can host him. I've played him before over the board. We had a tournament game, like, at the end of a Saturday night. Both of us must have been super exhausted. And I think this was before he got his title. Um... I think he was just like 21 something. I don't remember exact rating, but um, yeah, we had a fun game. He's a really cool guy. Sorry I didn't have much of a chance to meet him afterward. But yeah, thanks to everybody for watching. It's been a fun little session. Yes, yeah, so let's go uh, watch International Master Rosen. And we'll see y'all next time.